Welcome to another edition of the Trucking on Route 66 in Missouri Oral History Project, a collaborative <coughs> initiative between the Missouri State University Libraries and OzarksAlive.com. I'm Tom Peters, the Dean of Library Services at Missouri State University. My colleague on this oral history project is Caitlin McConnell from OzarksAlive.com. This project is made possible in part by a grant from the Route 66 Corridor Preservation Program of the United States National Park Service. Today's date is Monday, April 16th, 2018, and we are in, uh, we're just east of Springfield in the home of our guest, who is Otho Young. Otho, thanks for being with us today. Okay. It's kind of a, where we were just joking before we started the tape that this may be the last freezing weather of this winter season. We hope. <laughs> We've been saying that about every, every week for the last month and a half, sure. but uh, this may be it. So Otho, tell us, um, let's start with a tough question. When and where were you born? Uh, Webster County, mm -hmm. which is on the Marshville. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I was born? When? Yeah. Uh, July 22nd, 1930. 1930. Mm -hmm. So that makes you 88? Seven. I'll be 88 this oh. July. Oh, July, yes. Yes. Sure. Okay. So you're 87 years old. Yeah. Uh, and you spent most of your adult life trucking. So from 1951 you started trucking? Yes. Until 2011? Yes. Wow. So... 61 years? No, 60. 60? Yeah. All right. So you trucked for 60 years. So let's start when I got along. Now there's a few wide places in there between jobs or yeah. this or that, you know. Yeah. Now, now I went to service in, in uh, I joined the Army in 1948. 48? Right. And then I was, went to Korea in 1950 yeah. when it broke out. Yeah. You and served over there? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was right there, right after it started, got right there. Yeah. And I got rotated back in 51. I was 51. And, and I think it's about the middle of August. Yeah. And uh, I was home about. Two weeks, I'm going to say. Yeah. And uh, didn't have a job or nothing. Yeah. And a guy taught me the notion of going driving a truck and all the livestock, and that's what I did. Okay. So how'd you learn how to drive a truck? Or did you already know? I knew pretty well, but I hadn't pulled too many, very many trailers mm -hmm. at that time. Mm hmm So you started off by hauling livestock. Yes, we did. Uh -huh. Where'd you take it? St. Louis, some to Chicago, Oklahoma City, uh, Des Moines Highway, Omaha Highway, yeah. uh, Fort Worth, Texas. To packing plants? Yes, most yeah. of them was packing plants. Yeah. yeah. But all of them was packing plants. So who was your employer? Uh, it was Sherway Lines. Uh -huh. They had... had uh, trucking here at the stockyards. Yeah. And, oh. And uh, they hired drivers, and we had to run two-man operations sometimes. Sometimes you didn't, you didn't know where you was going. And, yeah. So what was it like when you first started out? Two-lane, a lot of two-lane roads? Oh, yeah, all, all, about everywhere was on. All two lanes. two lanes. Yeah. Sure was. Manual transmissions. Yes, oh, yeah. Yeah. No air conditioning. Cars didn't even have cars didn't even have automatic transmissions at that time. 1951. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, when you go to St. Louis or Chicago or to Oklahoma City, you'd be going on Route 66, right? That was yes, kind of uh -huh. what you were. What are your memories of driving along, driving a truck along Route 66 back in the 50s? Well, you didn't know any better. I mean, you didn't. You hadn't been on no good roads, so yeah. that was the best you had, and it was fine. Yeah. Was it okay? Okay. For uh, trucking? Yeah. Uh, they just built and, uh, the Army 
base up here at the uh, yeah. Waynesville. Fort Leonard Wood. Fort Leonard Wood. Yeah. And that's the only, when you pulled, a, you went right through all of the town, and when you got to Waynesville and pulled a big hill there, well then the four lane highways stuff uh, started, and it went past Fort Leonard Wood, then it went back down to Tulane. Tulane. And then you drove on Tulane till you got to the Diamonds, up there this side of St. Louis, yeah. and you got on a three-lane, which was a very dangerous road, a three-lane road. Oh, so the middle lane was for turning and passing? Yeah, yeah, you could pass and all, and there's places, they had it marked off places if you didn't have a yellow line in that middle lane, while well, you caught somebody, you pass. People you was meeting was supposed to stay over in that, Yeah. you know. Yeah. And then maybe, be places that, would, that uh, you'd have the, if you was going east, you'd have the, the, the yellow and that, and you wasn't supposed to come out and pass something. But a lot of them times they did. People would. It was, it was dangerous, dangerous road. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was Route 66 a pretty narrow road, narrow bridges and? Lots of it was. Yeah. Lots of it was, really. Yeah. Uh, so where would you, where in St. Louis would you take cattle? To, uh, uh, on this side you'd unload sometimes and it'd go to a packing plant. Yeah. You know, and then, then you went to the big stockyard sometimes yeah. across the river. East St. Louis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you said you took some up to, uh, took some loads up to Chicago? Yeah. There was oh. a place we hauled calves, uh, big. Bill calves, they called it back then. They weighed uh, 250 to 300 pounds. Yeah. Just cut, cut them off the cow. Yeah. You know, and uh, there in Chicago, we'd unload that at a little packing place. They bought rods, calves. Called veal calves? Yeah. Yeah. Veal calves. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. Double deck, double deck loads too. Oh, really? It's hard to haul because uh, they was big old calves. Yeah. And we got double deck loaded. You had to watch it going around the curve, and, or you'd turn them over, you know. Yeah. So what would happen if you turned over? Or... You just turned over. It's, it's a wreck. It's a yeah. bad deal. Did you ever have a wreck with uh, live cattle? No. No? No. But they'll shift on you, huh, if you... Yeah, well, uh, and just go around the curve, you lean it a little bit, and them calves could just, just Don't you just, know. Just, yeah. Yeah. The tighter the load would, was actually the best. The better, yeah. Um, so they couldn't, they couldn't yeah. you didn't want them running around, you know, or nothing. And we hauled a lot of pigs to uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Really? Yeah. Live? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. So you, you'd load them up in Springfield? What was that called, the Union Stockyards? Yeah, Stockyards over here. Yeah. yeah. So farmers and cattlemen would bring their... Bring their stuff in and it would sail. And they'd sell it at but, auction? But all the, yeah. No, not at auction, by the pound then. Really? This place, this uh, sale barn out here east, or, or west, uh -huh. uh, now that's sold by the pound, auctioned off. Uh -huh. But this wasn't. They just had buyers come in there, and then the stockyards had sellers. And They'd take them in a pen here and show them these hogs, calves, or what they're looking for, and yeah. shoot you so much on it, and I guess. And I, as not. soon as they sold, then they'd get loaded up? Yep. So how would you know that you had a load to take to Fort Worth, or Oklahoma City, or St. Well, Louis? the trucking company there, or you was leased yeah. to, or riding for, noted. They the, they'd tell you? Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, when they, when they uh, get a load with them, and, it's like hauling hogs to uh, to Fort Worth, Texas, in the summertime. It's very hot. Yeah. Very hot. Well, we'd go over to the the ice plant, take the trailer and go to the ice plant, and they'd throw block ice up on the top deck. Oh, really? Block ice underneath. Uh huh. And you'd load them hogs and uh, head out. And and I never lost. Well, I never did ever lose a hog or nothing. Really. Huh, you never lost a single animal, do I? No. Really? Um, yeah, so I was going to ask you, so I imagine heat and cold were 
problems if you're hauling livestock. With what now? Heat and cold, you know, cold in the winter. Did you ever have to? Yeah, but I don't, I don't remember, uh, I don't remember ever having any trouble hauling them in, in the winter time. In the winter? You just don't, didn't haul, we didn't haul near as many in the winter time as you did in the summertime. Yeah. All right. Um, so, right today, St. Louis is about a three hour drive. Mm -hmm. Back then, what, what, what was it? If you were hauling four or five hours? No. Six hours. Six hours to St. Louis? Or better, yeah. Would you do it in one day? Would you? Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you'd load, they'd load you out, see that. People bring those cattle and stuff in early in the morning, no. yeah. and they'd get them all sold and split up and all this and that, and you'd start loading about four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh huh. Well, I mean, driver didn't do nothing loading. You just when the, the truck would come and call you to go to sell over here at this place and get a load of hogs or go here or you was going there or whatever. Uh -huh. All you had to do was just go back and rig into the chute and it didn't take them long to load you. Yeah. Did you uh, did you have a favorite run? Did you like St. Louis over Oklahoma City or? I'd rather run Oklahoma City than I had to St. Louis really. Really? Uh -huh. Why'd you why'd you like Oklahoma City? Well <clears throat> it wasn't too long till they built the uh, the turnpike there yeah, yeah. on the uh, more or less well, I call it on the Oklahoma City side. Yeah. And then they then they uh, built one then from or from Tulsa to Oklahoma City and then they built one from from Tulsa to Joplin. Yeah. And uh, I, so, I like that better. So that was a much better run. Yeah. yeah. See, you run old 66 all the way to Oklahoma City. Yeah. It wasn't four lane either. Yeah. You did that, huh? Early on, early years? You'd get yeah, old oh, yeah. 66. And, and, and uh, Venita and yeah, places you went like that. Yeah, all these little old towns. Yeah. It's like going to St. Louis from here. Yeah. You through all of them. Slow you down. The only place like us telling that they had in the four lane was up there. Yeah. Uh, Fort Linwood. Yeah. Uh, so where would you stop for uh, f food and fuel? Well, we didn't have to fuel like if you were going to St. Louis because you, you could do carry it. enough fuel to you go could do it back. Yeah, you could do it on one. But there's truck stops all scattered along up through there. And, yeah. But Would you stop for lunch? Or sometimes, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Do you have a favorite place that you like to stop? Well, up at the Diamonds, back yeah. this side, there was a big yeah. bus stop there and yeah. everything. That was a good place to eat. There, there's a lot of good places to eat. Yeah. The road back then. Lebanon had a good place to eat. Lebanon? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what kind of food would you eat as a truck driver? Would you eat, you know, Blue Plate Special, the meatloaf, mashed potato kind of thing? Or? Well, kind of, yeah. Just, and bacon and eggs for breakfast, if you're any word for breakfast. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Normally, if you're going up to St. Louis or Oklahoma City, you'd go solo. You'd go what? Solo by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you're going to Chicago, would it be a two man? It should be. Yeah. Wasn't always? Mm, well, <laughs> it's supposed to be, but sometimes it wasn't. Yeah. How long a trip was it to Chicago? Well, it's, it's, see, I think we got paid about 500, a little over 500 miles each way. Yeah. So you're looking at a thousand mile trip. Trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And were truckers have always have truckers always been paid by the mile? Is that sort of the standard? I mean, it's always been the standard way to pay a truck. I, I guess that's the way I was paid. I would like to be paid. Yeah. And you had no uh, no credit cards back then, right? Yeah. So how would you pay for something? Just strictly cash? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the company would give you, if you're driving for a company like that one, and you had the gas, say, in Oklahoma City, and why well, they gave you fifty or hundred dollars. See, fuel wasn't high then. Yeah. Gas, gasoline, you bought a lot of gas for 15, 16 cents a gallon. Yeah. And a lot of the trucks ran on gas back then, right? Well, there wasn't no diesels. No diesels. Uh -huh. When did diesels come in? Mm. 
back in 53 or 4. Yeah. They started? Yeah. Putting a few out. Yeah. What were your thoughts about diesel uh, diesel trucks back in the 50s? Do you think it was a well, good thing? Well, the or? thing about it, they, they put, put those diesels out and, and uh, we had a lot of international tractors and uh, they had big engines in them. And they were just out trucking diesel. I mean, pull them out, pull them on hills or about anywhere. Really? That old diesel made lots of noise, but it didn't <laughs> didn't get along too good. Yeah. Black smoke just pouring out of it, you know. And, yeah. And but, uh, but they've got them fixed now, real good. Yeah. So what was the attraction of diesel? Was it uh, cheaper fuel, basically? Well, about about the same back then when it was down like that. Yeah. But normally diesel was uh, was from twenty to thirty to forty percent a gallon. Yeah. Cheaper than than gas was. Yeah. When it first came out, because it didn't wasn't very many on the road, you know, and they just yeah. didn't get rid of it. Now it seems like lately diesel's always higher. It's always higher, about forty cents a gallon higher now. Hmm. Supply and demand, probably. Or? Yeah. Yeah. So how long did you, how many years did you haul uh, livestock? I uh, started in uh, August 51 and uh, I've done about three years, yeah. four years. Okay. Then what did you do? Well, in the meantime, I, I had bought trucks. I had two trucks at that uh -huh. time leased over there. And, uh, and I had a driver on one, and I drove one. Okay. And so, then when, uh, uh, then I'm in, let's see, 56, why, uh, uh, I bought a, we bought us a home. We got married in 54, and I got it, but we bought us a home. Yeah. In 56. Whereabouts? And, uh, Whereabouts? Out here on, uh, on e, uh, North uh, 13. Uh huh. And uh, so uh, the guy that he just built it and he lost his job. He lived in it about five or six months. And so I, I, I traded him a truck and the job went with it. Oh. And uh, was he working for you basically then, or no? Oh, that he just became an independent trucker himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. So you traded one of your trucks. Yeah, in on 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 this home. On the home for the home. Yeah, you wow. know it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Outright, was it even swapped? No, 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 no. Okay. no uh, he had put, I believe it was twenty five hundred in that house. Only paid eighty five hundred for a, a three bedroom. Uh, uh, wasn't a diesel or wasn't a, uh, it, it was just a regular house, you know. Yeah. Wasn't brick home or nothing like that. Yeah. But it's a nice home. Yeah. And eighty five hundred. Eighty five hundred and yeah. And, and he and he had a mortgage on it for for uh, right at six thousand yeah. dollars, and and so I got uh, and he put in twenty five hundred. All right. That's when he built it. So I just swapped him, swapped him that truck and job for, for twenty five hundred, and uh, that and left me on. Thirty and went ahead and paid out the house then. Thirty five hundred dollars on the mortgage. Twenty five hundred on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, so at that point, you had your own truck. You were a independent owner. And I had another truck leased there at the stockyard and the driver on it. Oh really? Two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how long did you do that then? Did you? Uh, uh, we done it. I don't know. Till probably about fifty eight. Yeah. But I drove. I drove for different companies then. Uh huh. Then, so you would just uh, you know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want. You'd just be a kind of a contractor. Well. They need a load taken to wherever you'd. you'd well, no, they just work for the company that you. Were, Least to. Oh, okay. And they they run they run your truck uh -huh. for you, you know. Maintain it and everything. Well, no, not maintain it, but oh. uh, the driver 
I'd take his orders from the people that he used lease to. Okay. They, they're the one that runs your truck. And, so what was the name of the company that you were leasing your trucks from? Or, I was leasing the trucks to Sherway Lines. Oh, I see. That was the name of the stock company. Uh-huh. So you did that till 58 about? About 58. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I left one there for quite a while. But I got rid of that one, you know, that I'd swapped from in on my truck. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, in 58 I started hauling propane gas. Oh. In a big in a big tanker? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Went to the to the well and got the gas. Uh-huh. And unloaded them here in Marshfield and different places in the storage tank. Uh-huh. Yeah. Why'd you why'd you get into that from livestock to propane? Well it just it was good, it was a good job. Better money? Yeah, and and on that had and I had two trucks different trucks I'd bought and put on that. And I got my fuel furnished me for that truck, them trucks. Really? That propane. Really? Yeah, the propane wasn't worth very much money then. Yeah. But that was right in my contract that uh, your fuel would be furnished for your trucks. Yeah. And it was, so you go over into Oklahoma and... Oklahoma, pick it, yeah, pick I picked up. up that stuff about everywhere, you know, in wintertime it would get short in different places, but they yeah. find you some place you can go load. Yeah. And then you'd bring it back here? Back here. Yeah. And well, we hauled it to, I hauled it to Ava, to Lebanon, Marshville, and had a big storage plant here at the Springfield. Uh-huh. And you know, we just took two drivers, took two drivers. I'd make a trip and come in and unload, and then my other driver would show up and he'd go come back. Yeah. <clears throat> we get two loads a day out of Jeff City. Really? Day and night. That we, they's open 24 hours a day to load. Really? Sometimes I have to go to Tulsa and get a load. Sometimes to Oklahoma, Oklahoma get a load. Just everywhere they Yeah. You know. But it was more, um, oh, the routes that you take were more consistent? Mm hmm Yeah. How long did you do that? Uh, till 62, I believe. All right. Did about four years? Yeah. Yeah. And in the meantime, I had a car transport. So you were transporting new cars? No, yeah, new ones, but it was them little ones. They're just coming out with a lot of those Volvos and, uh, oh. and uh, stuff like that. Oh, foreign yeah. cars? Huh? Foreign cars? Huh? Oh, where'd you get those? Uh, well, uh, went to uh, Florida. Uh, went to Florida. Uh, what's that other place where all the water was? Down there, they have that big deal every year at. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, uh, just all over down there, they come in on a boat. Uh huh. And that, how many how many uh, cars could you get on one of them? I get six. Six cars. Six little ones. Uh huh. Yeah. And you'd load them up right off the boat, or somebody would drive them up there. No, and... that they had they, the boat come in, and then every who the company here would call wanting so many cars. Yeah. And send them a check for them. Yeah. Like where were you unloading? Tampa maybe or? Uh huh. Where'd you get those boats? Uh, where the boats different came? different places, yeah. Tampa, where the, where the boats come in to. Wherever the ports were. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So you'd drive down to Florida. Uh -huh. Would you uh, drive without pulling anything? Would you take a load down to Florida? No. Really? Just empty car trailer. Really? Yeah. Wow. Had a uh, car trailer. Because those are very specific. They're designed to carry cars. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Even back even back in the. 60s. Oh yeah, yeah. So you go down empty. Mm -hmm. Load up. You six didn't have no backloads on them. Yeah. <clears throat> you know. Yeah. Not much else you could put and on there. You'd go to go to this big lot or this big place where the cars had come in at. And yeah. They'd have drivers that would drive those things up into the. No, I'd you you had to load your own cars. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, to load the own cars. Cause, oh, yeah. Yeah. Was that kind of a tricky deal? No, not really. Once you got onto it, it wasn't. Yeah. At first, when you, the, of course, you load your bottom ones first. Yeah. And then you, you raise you can, yeah. it, and then you let it down and put your ramps here. Yeah. And when you got up there right at the top for it to break over, well, you, when you run up there, you're just looking up to the sky. You couldn't and, see. Yeah. And the wheels would, well, not actually come off there, but they'd get off a light there, and then she'd fall over on, yeah. Yeah. on that, and then you take her on to the nose there. Yeah. To the, yeah. To never the, had any accidents? I've had a few, but I never had a, I've never had a check chargeable one. Uh-huh. Chargeable in the sense that it caused some real damage? Well, yeah. no, it be your fault. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have a fender bender once in a while, and, uh, yeah. and sometimes you have a bad one. Yeah. So where would you take the cars? Just to different dealers? No. There's a place here in Springfield that's that Davis dealers. Really? Uh -huh. So you'd always run between wherever, wherever you picked them up in Florida and bring them back to Springfield? Mm-hmm. And then... Then they, there was a car company. They, they sold them to people here. Yeah. yeah. Car lots and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned Volvos and. Uh, uh, they used to have a little one called Puget. Puget, I believe. Yeah. And oh, there's used a bunch of them. They've kind of phased a lot of them out. French, no, fr French cars and yeah. Italian cars. Just, yeah, just all kinds. British cars. Really. Oh. How long did you do that? Mm. Probably four or five years. Who provided the specialized trailer? Uh, we had the trailer. Uh -huh. Did you own it yourself? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. 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 And then I just sold it and everything. Yeah. And one of the guys, uh, used to be a guy here by the name of Bobby Tucker. He was back then they was racing cars uh -huh. oh he was top number one race car driver uh -huh. and him and uh, another guy owned this car deal oh. too you know uh -huh. well uh one night in winter time there i can't recall which what year it was but uh we was having real bad weather and everything and uh, him and his little girl and another little girl uh, uh, burn up in their house. Oh. It was winter time and, yeah. and uh, the stove, I mean, malfunctioned or something. Three girls died in the fire? No. no his daughter, and then there was a little daughter had come home with that little girl from school to uh, stay all night, uh, and, and Bobby Tucker. And then when that done that, well then uh, Lanny, Lanny, uh, Lanny Fritz was the other guy's name. That was in, they was in cahoots together, you know, had yeah. some company together. Yeah. And it just kind of folded then. And, uh, uh -huh. and then there was a, a company down south there that put a lot of trucks out there hauling cars on the, on the uh, Volkswagens. Uh -huh. Volkswagens was coming in. Yeah. Well, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, I never did ever haul a Volkswagen. Really? And, but they turned that over. Uh oh. That, that guy. That, that guy that, caught, yeah, bought them out. Oh, yeah, yeah, he had a bunch of them. Imported cars kind of deal. Uh -huh. yeah. Hauling for, he hauled cars for everybody. Yeah. So what did you do then? Well, I hauled propane, and then uh, I started hauling uh, haul freight. What, what kind of freight? Just like you have for, I mean. Unrefrigerated? Like, no, no, I didn't haul, didn't haul much. I didn't haul too much, but I had a truck leased that run from, from uh, I made a few trips with it. But it would, I would load cheese over at Kraft. Uh huh. You own 
about a Friday or a Saturday, most time Friday, you get it, up, get it loaded. Then you go to New Jersey. Uh huh. Then on unloading New Jersey, and then on over into New York. You had to go into New York? Yeah. I was leased to, to a company out of uh, Chicago. Had the truck leased to them. And, uh, and you'd go to this big truck stop over there in New York. And you'd lay over, you'd lay over there. They had sleeping quarters and everything. Uh -huh. And then a lot of people would call in there for them to haul, come get a load of freight and take it somewhere. Yeah, bring it, bring it back. Bring it back. All this run all over. Yeah. And so uh, he'd get you loaded. I like to I'd get a load in Kansas City, back to Kansas City or St. Uh -huh. Louis or. Uh -huh. And telev so, televisions was really hot in there yeah. too, and uh, radios. And, so you're bringing televisions and radios and uh, yeah appliances and things yeah. like that back from. Yeah. The East Coast. Yeah. So what was it like driving, you know, into New Jersey, New York, places like that? Was well, it? it was rough then, but nothing like it would be today. Yeah. Yeah. They had a, a, a Pennsylvania Turnpike. Yeah. But it was a death trap, really. When you went, they, I think you had to go through seven tunnels, and it wasn't four lane through there. One four lane, but you, just lane going this way, lane going this two lane, lane yeah. two lane, and that smoke would be so bad that you couldn't hardly stand it. Really? Diesel smoke and really? gas fumes in that tunnel. Yeah. Boy, it seemed like it was ten miles through one of them, but it wasn't near that far. But really, whew, boy, you just that was the worst time. Huh? Yeah, the and then there wasn't no divider. You met really? them suckers just really. You know, the wow. boy, you're awful glad to get to them. Yeah. Uh, did you prefer driving during the day or during the night? Uh, most of the time I'd rather drive at night. Uh-huh. Why is that? Well, because years and years ago, uh, uh, 10 o'clock at night, from there on to about 6 in the morning, all there was out there was trucks. Uh-huh. Once in a while you'd see it be a car or something. Yeah. And, uh, and in the summertime, the weather is just a little cooler and everything. And, yeah, yeah. And you know, and uh, and I just, I just prefer the yeah. night driving. Didn't have to worry about drunk drivers at night. Not like you would today, no. Yeah. yeah. So um, you bring stuff back to Kansas City or St. Louis, or just like any of those places. Yeah. yeah. And then you come they back. had a load coming to. Yeah, you come back empty then. Come, come right on back down here. Spent a, few, spent a few days, R&R, and &R yeah. go out again. Yeah. Yeah. Now you had to keep a log book of where you'd oh, go? Oh, yeah. 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 And who would look at that log book to make sure that you... What were the rules? You couldn't drive more than 10 hours at a time? or No, and... and uh, uh, well, they had back then they called it ICC and they was real strict. Sometimes you'd roll on a set of scales and they'd want to see your logbook. Yeah. See if you've been out driving too long. ICC, Interstate Commerce Commission? Yep. Yeah. See, that's done away with now. Yeah. So when you'd stop at a, at a way station. Sometimes it would, yeah. Sometimes I'd say, when you, oh, got, I see when you got in, though, when you got into your company, you had to fill out that log, you know, and turn it into. Yeah. And they, they had it then in case somebody wanted to check you. Know. And what uh, what did they really care about? How many miles you'd driven? or The company? Yeah. No, they'd, they'd like for you to drive all the time if you would. You'd yeah. Get the freight there quicker than yeah. having to stop and yeah. Take an eight-hour break. Yeah. And this is back. Of, a lot of drivers did too. I've been guilty of some of that myself. <laughs> You'd push it a little bit if they needed to have that. Uh, yeah, and you know. Were uh, there ever bonuses if you got a, a load to a certain place by a certain time? Would you no, get a little, you know, a little extra? Or? No. 
Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I, I never did. I didn't know. Yeah. I never did get a bonus for it. Uh, so what were some of the, you mentioned that some of the roads weren't in the best condition, so uh, safety was a concern. Did you have to worry about, uh, you know, like when you were hauling cars, did you have to worry about kids throwing rocks at the cars or anything like that? I guess, but I never did worry that much about it because a lot of that stuff didn't go on like like it does today. No, no. Now they put that film over the fr fr finish, you know, so that it's not just out there. But it was just a car. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any accidents? Not hauling cars, no, no. Did you ever have any accidents at all when you were? Yeah, yeah. What happened? I had an accident in Ardmore, Oklahoma one afternoon. I had I used to run from here. Uh, from here to uh, down there and, uh, and down in Texas there and I'd go to bed there Then that evening they'd get you up and send you back home mm -hmm. but once in a while you'd have to come over through Ardmore and pick up a load if they didn't have a load for you there mm -hmm. and Fort, or not Fort Worth but I'll back up in a minute before we were but uh, and I went to Ardmore. They got me up, and I went to Ardmore with an empty trailer and uh, dropped it and picked up a loaded trailer there. Uh -huh. It was loaded with this here wire that the Uniroyal uh, uh -huh. factor there uh -huh. that made tires, you know, Uniroyal. Yeah, steel belted. Steel belted. And, yeah. and so, so you picked up the load of wire, huh? Yeah, that wire that they put in those tars and all when they got it in, why they, a lot of it was rejected. Oh. And they had me load it with, uh, with uh, all that to get it get on in that trailer, big round rolls of wire. Yeah. It was wasn't no good. Yeah. And they didn't have it tied down or nothing there. Oh. Of course, it's in a box. I mean, yeah. in a trailer. But anyway, uh, when I left there, you just went a little way and you got on Interstate 35, uh -huh. right there in Ardmore. Uh -huh. So I went, got on, went down around, and something just all at once, and, and it's 25 miles an hour around that. Uh -huh. you know, something just, you know, just like you slap two boards against the side of that trailer, and that truck just started up. That uh -huh. war had, had, had given away that them rolls yeah. and hit the side of that trailer yeah. and it just laid me right over there. Knocked it right over? Mm -hmm. What did you think at the time? <laughs> well, it took me a little bit to remember what was going on. I didn't know exactly what all had happened till it was all over with. So it laid the truck and trailer over right there on that getting off. On that? Getting are, on the ramp. Are you, uh, are you, were you okay? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't get scratched and, uh -huh. and I just took my foot and, and uh, truck was still running and everything. I just took my foot and pushed the windshield out and crawled out through there. Uh -huh. And uh, or shut the engine off for. But it was laying, it was laying there. So the whole thing was pouring out of it and everything. I just turned the key and kind of got through there. Yeah. And so, of course, that blocked the road and everything, you know. Yeah. But it wasn't too long then. We got the highway patrol. Somebody called the highway patrol. Huh? Uh, they got out there uh, and uh, got a guy, highway patrolman, he just kind of shook his head and he said, uh, he said, uh, this, this makes about the fifth load that's been turned over here on that wire. He said, some of these days he already learned how to tie that down uh, and all. Yeah. And uh, wasn't no tickets issued or nothing. And uh, there was a state car following me, followed me on that ramp two men in it. And this highway patrol said, I tell you if your company thinks that you was going too fast or anything, well the highway patrol said, how fast do you think you was going? I said, under 25 mile an hour because I was taking it real easy. Yeah. And uh, he said, These, uh, the, those guys, state guys come to me and told me, said, uh, it's none of his fault at all. And, and 
and tell him that we was following him and that uh, that we checked his speed and he, he was running 15 miles an hour. 15 miles an hour. 15 still miles an hour on. trying to go get on yeah. that, you know. Yeah. And so uh, uh, he said, "There's not going to be no, there wasn't nothing you could do, and you make about fifth or sixth load of turn over here." Huh. And uh, so they should have had it strapped down for them. Couldn't, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it way overloaded the boot. Really? Yeah. I'd, they'd have got me, probably if I'd even got around there, they'd have set of scales on one yeah. between there and Tulsa. Yeah. Or, or Oklahoma City, and uh, yeah. probably I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got across them scales. Or wouldn't have fine. Yeah. yeah, instead of having about 40,000 <laughs> on what we generally haul away, it had up around 50, 55,000. Yeah. So what do they do if they catch you with overloaded? I mean, do, you, do they make you unload part of it? Bring out another truck and they won't let you go on, huh? No, no, no. Yeah. Most of the time they don't, but yeah. there's not too many of them freight companies don't don't overload very much. Anymore. Well, it's like, I mean, they've got terminals here now, you know. Yeah. And they load them out and they don't. But, the, but this here was loaded from them people down there and then the yeah. tar company. Yeah. So what else did you haul? Well, let's see, gas and cars. <laughs> Livestock? Livestock. And freight. Reject wire and... Mm -hmm. I guess that's about all, I guess, I can think of. For 60 years? Mm -hmm. You know? You, oh, no, no. you never hauled any refrigerated or frozen no. items? Always just dry. Any flatbed hauling? No. All right. No. What, uh, I imagine the trucks changed quite a bit in the 60 years that you were trucking. Oh gosh, yeah, <laughs> no comparison. Tell us about, you know, what were some of the, what were some of the advances that you experienced in the, in the trucks and the, well, getting bigger, bigger trucks and getting bigger motors and uh, yeah. and uh, you know and yeah. better highways. Boy, this the highway system today is fine to what it used to be. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you were you were really trucking while the interstate highway system was being built. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that where you mean? Wasn't very many, even very many turnpikes now. Up, up east, there was already some. Several turnpikes, I guess. Yeah. Um, Pennsylvania and on in New York and places like that. But uh, around here, they were. Oklahoma. Well, Oklahoma, I've seen it built too. We used to yeah. run over 66 all the way to Oklahoma City. Yeah. Yeah. Were you generally uh, happy when a four lane oh, yeah. interstate came in? Yes. Yeah. Faster? Oh, safer? Yeah. yeah. Lots yeah. safer. Yeah, gosh, yeah. Yeah. When you stopped at a truck stop, would you check in with your dispatcher? Typically, would you call that person? Mm -hmm. or? No. 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 He. He. he uh, they know when you got loaded and left, and or wherever you know. Yeah. And working hauling freight for like for roadway and them people. Uh, if you load here in Springfield, I mean they load you. Trucks all hooked and everything. You don't hook them up or nothing. Really? Uh, fuel and everything. Really? Just you ready to have go. fuel enough to take you where you're going. Ready to go, huh? Then you pull in it there. If you're going from here to Oklahoma City, you're going to Dallas, you're going to Chicago, you wherever you're going, you just pull her in there on the inbound lane and go in, punch a clock, and hand the dispatcher your, your freight bills sure. and yeah. whatever. You don't even know what you got on. So you were, oh really? You didn't even know what you were hauling? No. Really? No. You don't, wow. You don't touch nothing. Wow. Hauling freight. Yeah. You wouldn't even know what you were hauling. Well, just freight of some kind. Freight, you know? freight of some kind. Yeah, yeah. And if it was paint and stuff like that, they'd have the, the flappers on the side of the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, uh, so you were just hauling point to point, sort of, and once you got there, Someone else would handle it, you know, right there on the on the site and back it in. And oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Or I'm maybe, thinking like in a harbor, it'd be like a tugboat, you know, or something. Maybe like that. Uh, you leave here and, and you go to uh, 
Oklahoma City. But that load you've got, it may be going to California. Yeah. They just, oh. they just take you off and put you in bed and don't oh. have a driver's already called and waiting for that. And he oh. gets in and takes it where he's. Takes oh. it. So. Albert Herc, maybe we'll say. And, yeah. And then. Uh, Pass it on. So it was almost like a Pony Express kind of deal where. Yeah. You'd only take it one leg of the journey and then. Uh huh? Yeah. yeah you, right. Mo most of the runs, though, was only about a, about a 10 hour. Yeah. And then you'd catch another load coming back. But when you when you rest or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or sometimes if you wanted to go on, you could you could just keep it going on west. Yeah. I went from here to to um, Oklahoma City or El Reno, which is twenty miles on the north side of Oklahoma City. Yeah. And they had a that was a big place there, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then get up and the dispatcher would ask you if you want to go to you want to go to Albuquerque or Dallas or wherever, I'd yeah. always go to Albuquerque. You'd go off to Albuquerque? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Get up, then when you get to get your rest and get up there, well, I'd go on to Kingman, Arizona, mm -hmm. and they'd put you to bed again. And then I'd go into, uh, when my rest was up, dispatcher would uh, run me to, if, if I had the hours and all, he'd run me to Atlanta, California. Mm -hmm. and that was a turnaround run. They had a heck of a big truck line there, and yeah. there in uh, there in California, and uh, and you turn that though. It was only two hundred and forty miles or something. From, oh, I see. From there, and oh, so I see. they'd you'd throw your bills in one a shift and a, a shift patcher would be would throw you another set out going right back to Kingman. Oh. So your shift would be a turnaround shift where you'd go. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a half day yeah, in. Of, that was kind of the end of the line for it. So. Yeah, half day in and then a half day back out, back and, up to uh, Cayman. And yeah. then go back to Cayman and then go back to bed. And sometimes the, the guy there in Cayman, if he was out of drivers, he'd send you back. Oh. <laughs> there. And then I've stood out. I've stayed out there and run several days like that. Was that was and that I pretty like, good money? Oh yeah, good money. Yeah. And I just I like to run out in there, California or all the way west of Oklahoma City is good trucking. Really, a lot better than running east. How how so? Just less traffic. Less traffic and uh, just wide open space. Yeah, a lot of time, you know. Yeah. Could you go faster out in the southwest? No. Uh, well, you're not supposed to. <laughs> now. Uh, uh, California. Now, I don't know. It's been a few years since I've been out there, but there used to be a 55 mile an hour speed limit on trucks. In California? In California. Oh. Wow. Sometimes they would stop you if you was going 56 or 57 and give you a ticket. Really? Other times they wouldn't. Some of them might let you run 58 or 59. Yeah. But you didn't know which one you was going to get if, I mean, yeah. you was lucky if you got one that didn't give you a ticket. Yeah. Um, so it's best just to hold down there around 54 to 55, maybe 56. Yeah. Did you, uh, I mean, that, uh, I don't know this. Are, do trucks have cruise control today? Mm -hmm. When did that come in? Cruise control's probably been out there 20, 25 years. Yeah, before then though, you were, you were, had your foot to the accelerator. And even when I'm trucking, I've noticed that, you know, you got a pretty heavy load and, you know, even if you have a, just a small incline, it'll slow you down, you know. But now though, they've got big motors and stuff and they, they don't, some of them. Yeah. And they've got automatic transmissions in yeah. the new trucks now. Yeah, I'd have to shift them even. No, just yeah. sit there and that sucker hit a hill and that just, they, they tell me now, I've never, I've drove a few tr trucks that uh, had automatics in it, but uh, uh, ain't like the automatics today they've got in them. I know Yellow Freight out at Oklahoma City is, is uh, some people out there I know that drives between there and, and Albuquerque, and he says them automatic transmissions are very fine. He said, you sitting there and that 
It's it's a new. There's a lot of pools between yeah. Oklahoma yeah. City and Albuquerque. Yeah. And he said you hit one of them, them big hills, you know, that sucker just slide when it you just, know, just, comes down a little bit and it just slides in there. You never feel it shift. And just, just keep going, huh? You just keep going. Yeah. And if it keeps on pulling down, well, it'll go to the next and just slide in. He said there's no jerking or really? you don't move the deer steer for nothing. I said, boy, I'd probably go to sleep doing that. <laughs> You think that's a problem with today's tucking? It's almost like it's too, too, uh, too easy. Too easy? Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't mind shifting gear, so yeah. <clears throat> that kind of kept me awake at night and all, you know. Yeah. But you call a hill a pole. Do what? You, you, you refer to a hill as a pole. Mm -hmm. If you're going uphill, oh, pole, yeah. that's a pole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, I'm thinking between here and Albuquerque. Well, of course, there's that mountain range just before you get into Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. and probably back and, in the day. And then in the, and now and also in Albuquerque, you yeah. in the world we, you fall off a big old hill back yeah. ten and eleven miles down there. Yeah. Then we exited off. We got way down into the city there. We we exited off and had to go into the terminal. Yeah. And uh, you just pull in the terminal and get out and walk into the office and tell you. And then going west out of Albuquerque is a pretty big pole getting up yeah, the west side. Yeah, when you when you leave going there, on, then you're going, going on west. Yeah, you go on ways top of that side yeah. up there. Yeah, and then farther on, you get to the Continental Divide. You get about I don't know seventy five hundred feet. And yeah, it's kind of a long, long, gradual pole going up. Yeah, there. yeah. So what, uh, what kind of, uh, what would you take with you on a trip like that? What did you have? What what would you take? You take a change of clothes? Oh yeah, yeah. I always carried. So you have a suitcase? Two, three, oh yeah. Yeah. What else would you take? Water? Take a jug of water? Sometimes you would maybe take your thermos or something. Or, yeah. Uh, of a night time, I like to carry a little coffee, you know? Yeah. But. You can, you can stop. They like for you to stop every 150, 200 miles or really? something. Oh, yeah. Even the even the freight companies would want you to stop? Yeah, you'll stop and walk around your truck and bump your tires. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You ever have any blowouts? Yeah, sure have. What's that like? What are you, are you painting? It sounds like a cannon going off sometimes. Yeah. But you do, when you do, uh, you don't carry spares no more. You don't carry spares no You just hit the road or try to make it into a truck stop or something, and uh, and you just call. Uh, they, they've got guys scattered out all the yeah. through there. They okay. come out and bring your tar and put yeah. it on. Was it always pretty much that way, or do what? Was it always pretty much that way, or back in the '50s, '60s? No, you... no, used to. When I started hauling, when I started hauling livestock. We carried spares and jacks and log really? chains and all this and that. Really? They don't do that no more. Really? Don't. So you'd have to go out there and change the tire. Well, jack but, it up and... But back, back then, when I first started, you, you had a flat, uh, blow a tar or something, why, of course, you'd find you a wide place or something to get off it. But heck, the other truckers would, would come and you wouldn't even have to touch nothing. Really? they just real, the, we used to work together and stay yeah. together. Yeah. But it's not that way no more. Yeah. Does that actually stop and help you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. The truck will be lined up behind you or something. See, really? Thinking you just broke down or something, come up there and you yeah. got a flat tar and boy, some of them get your jack and put, throw it under axle and be jacking on it and others be getting the lug wrench and getting the tar out of the racks. And, you know. But see, they got, they got, people got stealing them tars and uh, jacks and lug range and now then they don't even carry spares. Really? As far as I know they don't. Really? They just um, have they all been two dual tires pretty much from the beginning, from the fifties? So you typically only blow one, sometimes it'd be the interior. If it was the interior one you have to jack it up, take the good tire, the outer good tire off to get to the inner tire, right? Well they they kept them tried to keep them Uniformed up. Yeah. I mean, you didn't run a slick tar on the outside and a new one on the inside or nothing right. like that, you know. Right. And recaps, uh, I don't know about now, but we didn't use a lot of, they didn't use, most companies don't use a lot of, of uh, recaps. Hmm. 
because you blow a recap and you don't get stopped quick enough or something. If it's in the hot summertime, that sucker catch on fire it used to. Really? If it, if it, especially with if, if a tube was in it. Yeah. That their bow stem would get in there and yeah. and boy, I mean, tell you that started. It set that tar on fire right shooting now. Sparks. Yeah. yeah. Um, you carry a fire extinguisher with you? Yeah. Yeah. That's your safety. Did you ever have to use it? No. Yeah. And see, a lot of those freight trucks, they don't have but one seat in there. And that's yeah. where all your safety equipment is. On the is other? there on the right side where the that seat, seat used to go. Yeah. See? That way you can't pick, stop, pick up nobody. Yeah. <laughs> see what I mean? Would you ever pick up hitchhikers? No. Not very much. Yeah? No. Um. Now somebody... Somebody say he's broke down, uh, you flag you down or you stop, yeah. you know. You might haul him down to, this was for the CBs or yeah. anything, telephones and all come out, you know. Yeah. You'd haul him to the nearest station yeah. in front of you, ever work about maybe five mile, ten mile or whatever, where he could use a telephone, you yeah. know. You remember when CBs came in? Oh yeah. Was that a big deal? Yeah. It's you fine. see that as a big advance? Yeah, it's fine. Deal. Yeah. yeah. Of course, you can only, you know, what's the range on a CB? About 15 miles? or. Well, they got them where, no, I've, I've got one, got it in a pickup down here. And uh, I could talk from Tulsa, Oklahoma to uh, out pretty near in California with it. Really? It was all hopped up. And really? <laughs> 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 they, they, you had to be kind of careful with it or you'd <laughs> get caught. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've, I've talked to some of our guys be coming out of Flagstaff, Arizona, and I'd be going. You could actually talk to them on the CB radio. Oh, yeah. Huh? We had, you went up on the high numbers. and uh, Yeah. But it had a lot of stuff in it that wasn't supposed to be in it, too. Yeah. And people could jack them up, you know. And yeah. <laughs> what about uh, cell phones, mobile phones? Did you, you you trucked till 2011? Do what now? You trucked, you stopped trucking in 2011? Uh huh. So just seven years ago? Yeah. So did you ever carry a cell phone late in those later years? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Again, was that, did you consider that in advance? You didn't feel like you were so isolated out there? No, yeah. Yeah. And the, oh, these, cell, these cell phones is what's tough, got rid of the CBs. Yeah. I don't guess there's no CBs anymore. You think there are no CBs left with everybody just using a cell phone? Mm -hmm. And these trucks today have, uh, don't they have like this GPS monitoring so that the owner knows where it is at all times and whether it's moving or not? They've got, now this is, we didn't have when I come off the road, but they tell me now that, uh, that, uh, The owner, or their boss, whatever, he can. He's got a camera. And they've got cameras in those trucks and everything. Yeah. And he can sit, he can watch that driver sit here, really and fail and watch that driver. And they can actually watch the driver, huh? Well, huh. see if he's sleepy or yeah. whatever, you know, or yeah. he's got a rider with him, or, yeah. or he's supposed to have, or whatever, you know. And friend, friend of mine said that. Uh, um, that uh, he was just joking about it, but he said, you can't even pick your nose now without the boss <laughs> sitting there watching you. <laughs> no, he said that's how, about how strict they're getting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a camera well, on are. and, and, and uh, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that myself. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you kind of miss the old days? Well, yeah, and I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd feel kind of bad sitting there doing the best job I could do of driving and your, and your boss man sitting there well, back there in Springfield or wherever it might be right. watching you and uh, you might make a bobble and, yeah. or something. You, you know, I just don't. Yeah. Would you like to have a camera in your car or, yeah. you know, and yeah. your bosses or the school to yeah. uh, walk or never move that you make? Out yeah. Here the... Yeah. You think self-driving trucks are coming pretty quick here? 
I don't think, I hope they never get it. Now I've heard of that, uh, there was a guy I believe in California that had supposed to have had eight a running out there. Really? But yeah. I heard that, that took that all off. Hmm. And the deal was that, uh, say the truck was loaded and down the road there 50 miles or 150 miles or 200 miles in California and he had a drop off in one of these other cities. Well, the only thing drawback to it was sent that truck down that interstate and, and it exited off where it was supposed to, but there'd be a driver there then oh. would have to get in the truck oh. and take it on in, down into town and back it Too in. Too many uh, to, intersections and stuff. And they'd yeah. take the freight off of it yeah. and he brought it back out there yeah. and sent that truck on down the road. Now, no, they ain't got no business that that kill people or yeah. That's no good. Yeah. Did you ever, um, you know, they have that thing called intermodal where they'll put a piggy, piggyback on a train and then get it to one of those places. Mm -hmm. There's a big one up in Can east of Kansas City. You ever do any of that intermodal stuff where you're... No, but <clears throat> I pull a lot of pups. What's a pup? Two traders. Oh, yeah. yeah. Two traders, a uh -huh. pup. Yeah. And then I've caught two or three of them before. Really? Missouri don't allow them to pull a three here, say, I don't think. You don't see many three trailers. You get out west, see, they do that. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I even had a, a I had run, been in Albuquerque and went to Denver. They sent me to Denver when the rest was up. And Denver sent me into to Wichita, Kansas. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and uh, got in one morning about 7 o'clock. And so then that afternoon the dispatcher called me to, you know, to my rest was up and everything, and I'd had dinner and all. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> and he told me, I, or I said to him, I said, "What am I going? Where am I going tonight?" And he said, "You're going to Kansas City, into Kansas City, and then in Springfield." Because mm -hmm. I'd been out yeah. a week or so, you know. And uh, I said, "Okay." And he said, "Oh, by the way," he said we're going to hook a 48 footer behind that set of pups. Then pups is 28 foot. Wow. It's 28 foot. Yeah. Long. Yeah. But we're going to hit one 48 footer on behind that back pup. I said, have you ever done that? I said, well, I've, I've, I've pulled pups, I've pulled three pups before, but I never did have a 48 footer hung on me. Yeah. He said, oh, you won't have no trouble. I said, a uh, Kansas City driver had that on bed run. He comes from Kansas City in Wichita and turns it and goes back uh, uh -huh. home. Every uh -huh. night, that's that's a five trip. He does that every day, every night or day. Wow. And he said, we sent him out all the time and said, we got him wrote, wrote it now and said, uh, in two hours, you everything was a two hour call. So mm -hmm. And when you're two hours up, uh, well, you come down here, go and eat your dinner or whatever, you know. So I went down there and they had her sitting out there on the ready line. They do all the hooking and unhooking and all that. Yeah. Sitting down the ready line, there she was. And that trailer boy, I was long. <laughs> uh, I got to figuring on on that, and, but I just went right, left the terminal the only way and got on the turnpike right up there. And yeah. That takes you in the edge of Kansas City. Yeah. But we used to, when you had three, you'd, you'd drop that that third one yeah. out there. Just you got on the the turnpike, yeah. and then they'd set a city man out of the city in with a tractor to hook pull, onto that, pull bring it. that out. Yeah. But now they got it where you can take it right to the terminal. Really? And boy, I sat there and dreaded that. That's a lot of, that's a lot of. Get through that town. Yeah. And so, so now I got how out do you there. How do you turn with three? Uh, well, just like you do with two. Or you got to be a wide, it's got to be a wide turn. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I figured out going across there that I was probably about a hundred and around 110 or 20 foot long. And so uh, across the turnpike from from uh, uh, Wichita to Kansas City, there's, there'd be McDonald's, uh, all different ones of them. Right. They're on the turnpike, you can stop right. and have coffee. Yeah. Well, they've got a place you drive in like this. Yeah. <laughs> that one mistake I didn't make. I didn't drive in like that. I parked along the curb because I was 
too long, I'd have drugged the back trailer across the grass and everywhere yeah. else, you know. I yeah. didn't do it. Yeah. That's the only thing I had wrong. You got to be real careful of where you're where you're going with one yeah. of those. Yeah. And I, then I got off, got in Can edge of Kansas City there in the turnpike, and I got off on, and but I didn't have a bit of trouble. I took it right on through, huh. in there and and right into the terminal. Wow. Never had a bit of trouble yeah. with it. So what were you hauling? You know, freight. No, we don't we don't know what you got. Had to be there. pretty light though to carry three trailers behind you. No, I was loaded pretty good. I was loaded yeah. good, yeah. yeah. When did, uh, I was going to ask you, when did pallets come in, stuff on pallets? I'm not sure on that, but in the early had, days, it was had all, pallets for several years. Yeah, but is it, er, the early days of your career, it was all hand-loaded, right? Yeah. I mean, they had, they had forklifts, though, and everything. Oh, really? So they'd have it on pallets? and yeah. They'd run those forklifts right into the back of the truck uh, trailer like they yeah. do now. Of course, some loads, would, they'd have it stacked on the pallets, but you'd see them guys and they'd take it in there and drop that pallet down and, and stack it. Really? Instead of leaving them on the pallets, you know. Really? But, hmm. And when they got it stacked they'd up. They'd get more? I guess. I don't, I'm not sure on it. Yeah. But in a lot of loads now, I think all comes in by pallets. It's yeah, bad. yeah. So a lot of times you didn't even know what you were hauling. No. Really? They give you a, and, and you manifest your your name and everything, don't it, where you're going to, you know. And yeah. But this stack of bills and a lot of them that high. If you've got a big load of LTL or Yeah. Uh and you never had a you so all you never had to worry about anything freezing or getting too hot. We didn't or, we didn't haul no freezing nothing. Yeah, and a, a you were all stuff. You didn't. didn't matter if it got down below freezing inside there. It was no problem. And, yeah. Now a lot of times when it really gets cold, uh, your your uh, fuel will gel on you. Yeah. But I was lucky most of the time. I've never. Yeah. I've been across. I've been places where it way below zero, and but they. Have pretty good care of their fuel and everything. Yeah. <clears throat> now a lot of these truck lines will run a hot what will, will run a uh, they've got it where a, a tank or your a radiator hose they will they pep, 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 uh, pipe it right through there. Uh huh. Right right through there. Keep it kind of warm. And that keeps your fuel from jamming yeah. too. Yeah. Water circulates through there, but it don't yeah. don't get out of that line or nothing, you know. Did you ever sleep in your truck? If it's got a sleeper on it, yeah. But most of the time, hauling freight, you don't have a sleeper. But most of the time, you I, didn't have a sleeper. But I run two man operation, and uh, so what's the second man do if you don't if you don't have a sleeper in your truck? Do you just well, uh, doze off, no, up or no, no, you don't have the second man in there. Unless you do have a sleeper, oh, all right. see that's that has to be a two-man operation. But you yeah. got uh, your own bunk and everything. <clears throat> Does uh, you don't sleep in the same? Is yeah, is sleeping uh, pretty difficult in a truck in a moving truck? Well, yeah, if you uh, you ride with your if you you run with your driver a little ways and see if he can drive if he's driving sick and everything and yeah. get back and sleep and yeah but about four and a half to five hours about all i can sleep really then we used to break the, i drove for transcon freight company out of oklahoma city uh -huh. i got laid off here one time and went out there and drove, drove for them for a year and a half and that was all two-man operation yeah we run to new york we run to West Coast, uh, yeah, just all over the country. Uh, were truckers unionized? I put thirty-nine years in the Teamsters. Okay. So some of the years you were not a union member. And no, no. Was that not. an issue? Was that a you know if you were were, were union members and non-union truckers kind of at odds a little bit or? Well, not. Not necessarily, but all the freight companies was union. Uh huh. 
Now, like hauling livestock and stuff like that, no, I don't know what a union is, but they, yeah. they needed it. Yeah. You think there was some unfair labor practices well, going on? No, just they didn't pay much money. Yeah. No, I, when I started driving it, I made two cents a mile. And then, and then I got a job at, uh, uh, oh yeah, I, I hauled beer. Hmm. When, I, when I quit hauling livestock, I had my beer. trucks there, but I, I hauled beer for the, uh, used to be a beer company here on, the, here on Commercial Street, down there on the West End. Uh -huh. And he had Slitz beer, he was a Slitz and Greasy Dick beer. Uh -huh. I'd get one load of greasy bit out of uh, St. Louis, uh -huh. go down there and get it and bring it back. And then I'd go to Milwaukee and back and get a load of slits. Uh -huh. And that was the union. Yeah. And your truck was always hooked up and ready to go. Ready to go, huh? And, uh, and you get in St. Louis and you pull it in on the, the lot there. The, and he had a man hard there that all right, had a man there, and he'd come out and get your truck. And back then, they, all that beer was in bottles. Yeah. It wasn't cans. It's 24 four, bottles four, to four a keg. cans. Yeah. And so that guy'd come out there and get your your trailer and truck and bag it into the, an unloaded load of empties. Yeah. If you had empties on, you didn't have them every time, but you did a lot of times. Unload them, then he'd back it in where they was loading that, and he loaded your truck, yeah. and he knew how to load it and not be over. So you'd, dr you'd haul empty beer bottles back. back. Yeah. Would, would they wash those out, or were they just... Yeah, I'm sure they did. Really? Yeah. And then refill them? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was, see, that was actually before the cans come along. Yeah. I'm not sure what... what well, there must have been a lot of weight between that glass and that liquid. Yeah, but... And I done that, and that was that was you. you. Yeah. So you've been retired now for about seven years. Uh, yeah. Well, I I retired in uh, in '95. Oh. From hauling freight. Oh. Okay. And stuff. Okay. And I was retired a couple of months, and and <laughs> I wasn't ready to retire. You couldn't stand it, huh? No. I always had a fifth wheel trailer we took when I retired in July and we took a we trailer and all and we went out west and we'd been out there several times but anyway uh, and we was going to about uh, September or so before it started getting cold and freezing and I got back home then and, and I wasn't ready so I went to work for Peterbilt. I drove for Peterbilt for eight years, uh -huh. and that kind of fell through. And then I went and went to Penske and uh -huh. drove for him eight, for Penske eight years. Okay. And each one of them run me all over the country. Up till 2011. Mm -hmm. That's when you stopped and retired yep. for good. Yep. Yeah. So when you were running for Peterbilt and Penske, so that was. Uh, well, how many states did you haul to in your career? Most of them? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I've run, I've run for, but I've run a lot of the states though, even when I was riding trains coming. Yeah. They bought out, they was out of Oklahoma City, and it was big here, yeah. but they bought out a big company out there. Uh -huh. And just covered that whole East Coast. Yeah. And we run a lot up our New Jersey, uh, New York City, uh, all that up through there, mm -hmm. all over that East. But you said earlier that, you know, you really preferred driving out West. Yes. Yeah. Just open road, road, big open sky. Open road and traffic with well, you get up past Indianapolis and uh, uh, up in there and Pennsylvania and Ohio and yeah. New York City. Yeah. Yeah, I've been went right down through New York City going up to Newburgh. Yeah. Newburgh, and it's about 
90, 100 mile. To me, north, east, I'd say, out of New York City. Yeah. About as far as you can go up there, you know. Yeah. And. Uh, a lot of traffic. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you're driving, let's say you're, you're, you're driving out to Albuquerque. What would you do while you're driving? Are you listening to the radio or? You used to talk a lot on T on the CB. Yeah. You was always meeting your your buddies or so it's like somebody a, and kind of a moving gab session, huh? Yeah, it's shit. <laughs> There's a lot of company to you. There really was. Yeah. You never felt like you were by yourself. No. Yeah. Before the CB though, what would you do? What would you? Yeah. Drive. Drive along and pick your nose, I guess. <laughs> no. Uh, that's why I say those old CBs was a fine thing. Yeah. Kind of changed trucking. Yes, it did. Yeah. And you and you knew where all the cops were sitting at. If you was meeting some old boy, well, yeah. you'd want to know how he was looking behind you and yeah. fine, fine. Or, you just asked him the same thing, are you looking good or no, Mom, Mark, or so-and-so, there's one sitting there waiting for you, or this or that, you know. <laughs> Did you have kind of like code words or something you'd use, or? Not, not really, no. Yeah, it's just a lot, of those, a lot of those troopers, though, used to have CBs, too, and they'd yeah. talk to you or something. They'd listen. <laughs> yeah, you know. You ever get pulled over? Mm, for a CB, you're not... Using C, you mean using CB? Or, no, just pull over by a yeah, trooper. Yeah, I've been pulled over a couple of times. For yeah. Maybe running a little too fast. Yeah, speeding. Yeah. But I never did get, I don't believe I've ever got a speeding ticket. Really? They just give you a warning? Slow down? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is staying awake a real challenge when you're driving? A what? Staying awake. Well, not if you get your rest when you get home. I mean, yeah. when you... See, the whole freight, they, they like you. A lot of their runs is eight hours, nine, 10, 11 hours. Yeah. And then when you get in, when you get in uh, and hit that clock out there, why, well, eight hours later, they can be a call, they'll call you back if you run an extra board. I used to run an extra board, I'd rather run an extra board than anything. Mm -hmm. So they, so once you clocked out, you knew that you had to get some sleep. Yeah. Did you ever have a hard time? You know, we just Some sometimes days. when I when I'm driving and I get home, it takes me a while to kind of unwind. You kind well, of get that it does. that road it does jitters anybody, or something. You know. Yeah. But if I like if I come in at eight o'clock this morning, working for roadway, and uh, punched out, punched in. Mm -hmm. I mean, when it got in, and uh, I knew it pretty much, pretty sure, either four o'clock is seen in or maybe five, it'd be a call and it'd be a two hour call, but yeah. I'd come home and kind of try to unwind, and if it was meal time, she'd have me meal and everything, and all, yeah. you know, yeah. I'd take my shower and shave and do that then. Oh, really? You're ready to go? And then, then... A lot of times I get a two hour call, uh, she would let me sleep under an extra hour because all I'd have to do is just come up and, do, and, and I slept down here in the basement, I had a yeah. room down there. Dark. And dark and yeah. cool. I mean, it didn't have a, didn't need a, you don't need a furnace, I mean, you don't need it in a heating stove in the winter and you don't need an air yeah. conditioning in the summer. Yeah, nice and cool. Even had a, uh, phone jack in the area, yeah. but she'd take all of my calls if, uh -huh. if she was going to be here or something. So she was a good partner. Yeah. yeah. Well, Otho, thanks very much for uh, sharing your memories with us. We've been speaking with Otho Young, who was a trucker for 60 years, off and on, from 1951 to 2011. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, see, uh, when I retired in 95, and I wasn't ready to retire. Yeah. But I had turned, I had turned uh, uh, 65. And I 
thought, thought you know, that's a great thing, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so, and I went and worked 16 more years. So you worked till you were 81? One. 81. Wow. I was 81 in July and I retired in November. <laughs> 16, 16 years after I retired from yeah. the railway. Yeah. Wow. That retirement really wasn't for me. You didn't. But you enjoy it now. Yeah, but I'd, I'd get out on that interstate and I'd still like to be in one of them trucks. Really? I believe I've got, I've still got my credentials. Get, gets so, in your blood? I guess. I've still got my credentials, my license and everything. Really? Uh -huh. My CDL. If some dispatcher would call you and say, Otho, we just, we're really strapped for drivers. We need somebody to take a load to Wichita. I, I could do that, <laughs> but the first thing I've got to do is to go get a physical. Oh. So we had to take physicals about every two years. Yeah. And, and I was uh, in 16 there. It comes due. My, and so uh, they used to get it, have to get my license about every two years when I turned 70. And then in 16 there, which was a couple of years ago, I got it, my license, and, and I was about ready to drop it. And the lady talked me out of it. She said that the, she said that uh, your, uh, I wouldn't do that. I said, hmm. I said there's a lot of people would like to have that license, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, she said it's only five dollars more than if uh, if you just get a regular license. And I said, hmm. well, I didn't get in didn't didn't get my physical for come over here to, to get that. She said you don't have to have a physical, but you to to have, to, to have that license. But she said if if somebody. Uh, Asked you to take a truck a trailer to St. Louis and back. So that's the first thing you want to do. Yeah. Is go get a physical, and if you can't pass it, you just turn it down. You don't yeah. do it. Yeah. But yeah. she said, "That's all there is to it." But you can you wow. can have that license and keep it till you till they bury you. Wow. And that I don't have a blemish or nothing against it. Yeah. Or anything. Yeah. Well, congratulations. And, uh, you know, uh, I've just been, well, lucky or something, I don't know. Yeah. Well, thanks for, thanks for talking with us. Okay.